Explore that. Uh, life just got tougher for Cape Tonians. Level 6B water restrictions came into effect in the drought stricken uh, city today. Residents now limited to just 50 litres per person per day. This because dam levels are hovering at around 26%. The city's daily consumption has decreased to 450 million litres uh, to push back day zero beyond April 16. Saving water, the mantra for Cape Tonians. From prepaid meters and monitoring usage to harvesting grey water. Some are using spray bottles for hand washing rather than running the tap. Many opt for grey water to flush toilets. Well, we're saving our showering water um, and using that for flushing the toilet, only flushing when necessary. It's not good to waste any water, to wash the car at home, to wash the mat, everything. Actually, we need some workshops there to teach our community how to minimize the, the water, especially, uh, and to teach the people who are doing also the car, you know, washing the cars also there, they have to be taught. Some of the shower water, we recycle it and can do washing and stuff in. Mm. And it actually helps us if we don't go over the 50 litres. Everyone is chipping in. At this retirement village, water from dripping air conditioners and from the laundry is harvested. A bit of work and innovative thinking has also saved the swimming pool. Uh, we put in a tank, a 2,200 litre tank, and that is actually uh, all the water that uh, on the block of flats. They actually um, catch up the water in this tank and then we've got a, uh, a pump and we, re we relay all that water back into the pool. Also when we backwash, instead of the water flowing down um, the, the, the drain, we actually um, backwash into the same tank. Once it's filtered out, uh, we pump it back into the pool. And with bottled water flying off the shelves, Parliament is calling for a price freeze. Unscrupulous traders and retailers are accused of abusing the water crisis. We haven't had a response other than to say they are applying their minds to the matter. So that's two departments and also to bring in the competition commission on there. This, I'm sure there has to be some form of collusion in this that all the water, bottled water in Cape Town has suddenly shot up. Collective water saving efforts is a fine balancing act, but authorities say if more people come on board, the dreaded day zero can be avoided. Vanessa Puna, SABC News, Cape Town. Well, as day zero fast approaches in Cape Town, around 4 million people are going to be affected by this drought crisis. Mm -hmm. Day zero currently set for April the 12th. Credit rating agency Moody's says the water crisis in Cape Town is credit negative. It's placed the city on review for a rating downgrade. Greenpeace has called on government to declare the region a disaster area. Earlier, SABC was joined by Estuaries Manager at Endangered Wildlife Trust, Grant Smith. We started by asking him how Cape Town got to this crisis point. I think it's very important for us to to remember that you know climate is a very is a variable thing, and what happens is that we obviously rely on rainfall. Uh, you know that's the obvious factor, but we also re rely on rain falling in the right places. So we are, have experienced, and this is not the first time we've experienced something like this. Uh, we're experiencing a very dry year. Uh, we have ex experienced dry years before, and drought conditions before, such as in the year 2000. But what's different this year is that we have um, had a, a few dry years in a row. Uh, so we've had three dry years in a row now. Um, and the, the, the current data that has been analyzed by Dr. Wals Walski of, U of UCT actually shows us that in those areas where our dams are, our water catchment areas where we get our water from, in those areas, uh, this is possibly a one in 300 odd year flood. So it's an incredibly... A uh, rare occurrence, um, but it is related to weather, you know, it's related to weather patterns. So it's not something that we could have actually avoided in terms of um, what's happening with the weather around us. Mm. Uh, Grant, South Africa is in a strong position to lead, aren't we? Um, we are an active member, vocal member of the G77. We have strong international leadership and good policies. But 
uh, when it comes to our, our adaptation strategies, what should these look at and what are some of the adaptation responses um, that we should be instituting at national and local levels? Um, Kirsten, I, I, I think that, you know, I think that there are a lot of very interesting and new technologies coming out in terms of water harvesting. Um, there's new research being done just as there is with wind power and solar power. I think there's a, a lot of things that could be looked at, but to be honest, I, I think that we could really stick to the basics. And if on a local scale and a national scale, we could be looking at utilizing our water better, and so utilizing less potable water for our toilets, for, you know, watering the plants, for, for things that we aren't using to actually consume. If we could look at grey water systems and also then harvesting water ourselves, where there is water available through rain, rainwater tanks, for example, I think that that, it, even though it seems like quite a simple solution, if you could roll that out on a larger scale and get people actually collecting their own water, then we could take a lot of pressure off, off, our, off of our potable water systems. Mm. Uh, Grant, how can the general public get involved because it, uh, on the ground? Because it's going to take a great deal of individual responsibility and not always looking to government to solve all of our problems when it comes to water yeah, scarcity. I, yes, a, absolutely. Um, I think that for those that are able to, um, uh, then I think that people should be looking into getting their own um, grey water systems put in place or you know, just having rainwater tanks in their homes and then obviously very importantly we also have to realize that water is a limited it's a finite resource so we do need to start looking at ways that we can actually save the water that we do have when we do have it and then again like i've just said find ways to actually capture and store the water when it is available to us well, the city of Cape Town has denied waiting too long to start with desalination water projects in the drought-stricken province. It says that low rainfall last winter impacted on its planning. The city has assured the public, though, that all water augmentation projects, which include aquifers, are on track. Cape Town would be the first city in the world to run out of water. Several water augmentation projects are aimed at countering day zero, which is set for April 16. Among them, desalination, a process of making seawater drinkable. Being a coastal city, many have asked why this was not considered earlier. Obviously, um, the installation or the building of a desalination plant cannot be done overnight. We have essentially been able to deliver this scale of work within a period of months. Um, and this is in addition to all of the other uh, authorizations and licenses that one needs to obtain, as well as the procurement system that the city has followed. And so we've accelerated all the components of this project in an incredibly short period of time. And we are largely on track to ensure that we can still deliver the necessary new water um, at the time that, is, that was initially scheduled. The desalination plant at Strandfontein Pavilion is one of three in Cape Town. It's expected to produce 2 million litres of water daily by the end of March and 7 million litres per day by the end of May when the project enters its second phase. The other plants are at Monobisi Beach and the VNA waterfront. First step is extracting the water from the ocean um, with a subsea pipe. Um, through the pump station, then that gets pumped up to the plant which is sitting on a terrace at the, next to the parking area at Strandfontein. Um, that process comprises of, uh, of media filtration, removing any grit from the water, and then a reverse osmosis system that separates the salty seawater into a clean and fresh water drinkable stream, and then a concentrated brine stream. It's all hands on deck. The city says drilling into the Cape Flats aquifer is also progressing well. The well you see behind us was drilled yesterday. It's producing between four and five million liters a day uh, on blow yield, which means we're still flushing it after drilling it. It's a, it's a very high yielding well and very pleasing results. Level 6B water restrictions came into effect today, restricting residents to 50 liters per person per day. Those who exceed this quantity face hefty fines. No more to Solwan, SABC News, Cape Town.